Hi everyone, it's Elizabeth from Alpus Astrology at alpusastrology.com. Thanks for joining me today. So this is going to be my interpretation of the astrology for September 2022. But I want to remind you that you individually take that decision on how you think what I say fits into your life. You always have free will. And remember, this is a general reading and when I do the reading for the sun signs and ascendants later on in the video, after my introduction, um, I actually use whole sign uh, houses. It's just an easier uh, way to do it. To have a more accurate reading, you really do need to look at your chart. And I know a lot of my viewers already know a lot about astrology and they do that already. Okay, so how does September look? Well, it's interesting. We start off the uh, first and second of September with a yod. And a yod is kind of like a triangle, um, and it has uh, two, basically, uh, planets forming a sextile, but then they jointly form what's called a quincunx or in conjunction. And when you have this in a natal chart, um, typically it's kind of, it's, it's not necessarily a burden that you carry, but it's more like, um, not feeling that you really fit in because you've got something in this lifetime that innately you know you have to do. But when we put it into uh, an actual chart, a transiting chart, I tend to read this for more of a mundane aspect, unless you've got something like this exactly hitting some of your points. Um, so what do we have here as part of the yod? So at the two um, ends, we have Pluto, which is at 26 degrees, of uh, Capricorn, and we have Neptune, which is at 24 degrees of Pisces, pointing towards Venus at 26 degrees of Leo. And so we see that these two powerful planets, uh, in many ways transformational, truth-seeking for sure, if we could pick, I suppose, a couple words that could meld both um, the Pluto and Neptune, it would be truth, seeking truth. And it's pointing at Venus. So then we say, well, what, and it's Venus in Leo. I mean, Venus in Leo is um, kind of like, who's the star of the show here? It's the natural showman. It also speaks to being idealistic in love. So I really felt that um, this probably is going to be early September, some kind of event that happens perhaps to an actual person that comes into public view. This may be a female uh, because it is Venus, but it certainly will speak to our values, uh, value of self, uh, maybe value of females, um, as well as money. And of course, when we look at money and values, we then say, well, what about love? Now, because we've got Neptune here uh, aspecting this Venus in a yard, along with Pluto, I think that this probably is going to be leading to an overarching ask from the universe. What do you love? What means something to you? What brings sweetness into your life? We could see the rise of some female who's not afraid to get on the stage. When we look at the 1st of September itself, we have Mars now in Gemini, and we know we've heard various times where I talk about the fact that Mars is going to be in Gemini for quite a few months because of a retrograde, right? But on the 1st of September, it does sextile Jupiter, which is still, it's retrograde, but Jupiter is still in Aries. Uh, and this is at six degrees. So I saw this as, again, right at the beginning of September, positive move movement in communicating and feeling very optimistic about it. It's opportunities, I would say, to express um, some kind of messaging or communication. Now, Gemini does rule the third house, so I'm just going to cover some of the things of the third house. The main thing of the third house is communications of any sort, including our thoughts, maybe collecting information. 
but it also brings in siblings, your neighborhood. Uh, Gemini is very much associated with writing um, and short journeys um, and really uh, short courses or early sort of educational types of things. So I can cover those areas too. On the 3rd of September, we have Mercury, which is in Libra, opposite this Jupiter retrograde in Aries. Now, we will have Mercury going uh, retrograde shortly too. So I would say that this Mercury retrograde, I felt was an important retrograde, and I'll continue to speak more about that as we go along into this video. So I thought this, uh, for those folks that are having to pick a day, say, for negotiating and, and something really working out for them in their favor, uh, good for negotiations, getting advice. You know, Jupiter can represent someone like a teacher or a, an advisor. Um, and it can also be a time when benefits could come your way, especially through things that are Libra related. And of course, that kind of boils down to laws, right? So for those folks that, and, and Jupiter to some extent, also represents the law. So I think overall, this on the 3rd of September represents a potential time where you could meet up with somebody that could favorably help you negotiate through some kind of legal thing. Um, and again, this doesn't have to be a negative thing, but it's going to be a back and forth because it's an opposition. An opposition isn't the most favorable aspect to have, but Jupiter on its own tends to be very favorable. So I saw this as a favorable time for folks that if you need to earmark a time in September for beneficial um, negotiations of some sort, there to September would be a potentially good time. Um, we have Venus also now in Virgo. We'll be conjuncting that degree point of the new moon in Virgo last month, and that's at four degrees. So for those folks, say it says some Virgos, either uh, ascendants or um, sun signs or conglomeration of planets around four degrees of Virgo, this Venus coming in is just going to give a nice bump up in terms of benefits. Venus is viewed as the lesser benefit, um, but it could bring money in for you. It could bring a potential love, but this love will be a more practical down to earth if it's a love type thing. Um, but it can also just bring in some lovely sweetness with regards to love, values, and money. So see what you have potentially around this four degree mark of Virgo. All right, so we have the first lunation, which is a full moon. And this full moon is at 17 degrees of Pisces, 41 minutes. It puts the sun in the opposite sign, of course, at 17 degrees of Virgo on the 10th of September at 3 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. We also have the sun, which will be trining Uranus, and that puts the moon sextiling Uranus. And I saw this as just on that alone, Positive change, no question of it. Positive change coming our way. And it could be the as the result of, you know, with the sun in Virgo, it could be as a result of us finally deciding, looking at the facts and the information we have, uh, what makes sense here? What has some truth to it and validity and use? <clears throat> so on an individual basis, we may be going through an exercise like that. Now, we have an ongoing theme over the next couple months, certainly September and October, where we have in the background this Saturn, which is retrograde right now, squaring Uranus. And it's at 20 to 18 degrees, respectively. And so, again, we're looking at the old guard versus the new vision uh, of our lives and how unexpected things come about to change things in terms of our individual destiny path and of course on the worldwide stage as well. Now this can bring in new discoveries. Um, that can certainly happen. I mean Uranus certainly is all about scientific type types of things. 
uh, Uranus rules the skies above us. So that really speaks to, you know, our universe. So new things could be coming in, not only in September, uh, but certainly in early October, when we have a more exact square of these two planets. Now, Mercury is retrograde at this time in Libra, and it will be opposite Jupiter retrograde. Well, to me, this was saying a lot about uh, Jupiter used wrongly can exaggerate things. And in combination with Mercury, who can be a bit of a trickster, I saw this as lies, maybe even blatant lies coming out here at this full moon, where um, the law is going, the law represented by here, um, Libra, and then of course the retrograde of Mercury, uh, going back to look carefully at uh, some of the lies that may have been uh, brought out and taking time to do that. Now, I'm going to stay on this for a minute because this Mercury starts in Libra, but it goes back into the sort of latter degrees of Virgo before it goes direct, around 24, 25 degrees of uh, Virgo. And this says to me, this whole Mercury retrograde is really speaking to the fact of we're going to go back here and we're going to look real carefully and critically at these facts and then bring them back as Mercury goes retrograde and goes back into Libra where the law stands up and says, this is what we've found. Now, this can apply to the world stage, um, but if you've got something around these degree points, uh, Libra as well as Virgo, um, you could have something come up here too. And it could literally be the law, right? Where you have to deal for some reason uh, with the law. Individually, it doesn't have to be negative, um, but just pay attention to if you do have some degree points, say around eight Libra, and then uh, 24 to 26 of Virgo, because that's kind of the territory it will be covering for the Mercury retrograde. I think it's a very important Mercury retrograde, by the way. Nicely, this Mercury retrograde at this full moon, we're still on the full moon in Pisces, um, will be trining Mars in Gemini. And although this brings in a positive, favorable energy, I just got this intuitive hit uh, because of this whole Mercury is retrograde, um, that there's an activation here of maybe some deception going on. So that kind of works with the whole opposition of Mercury uh, opposite Jupiter too. I felt, felt this was maybe deception, again, probably on the world stage of some sort, um, certainly communications, right? We're talking Gemini here, any kind of messaging, messages of any sort, whether it's on your cell phone, um, you know, uh, through letters, through emails, uh, even through speaking, uh, could all be up here. Now, we have um, Neptune, which is retrograde at 24 degrees of Pisces. It'll be widely conjunct, this moon and sun. And I really felt, I got this image of dissolving, right? And it, it, that's the literal thing I got, was dissolving. And we certainly know that Neptune can do that. Neptune can dissolve things. So bringing in this whole thing into um, a picture for folks uh, regarding this full moon, I saw this whole Neptune thing dissolving all the things that were put forward and Mercury going in, collecting the facts in Virgo and bringing them forward. So the whole act will be the dissolving of what's not true and going back and figuring out what are the true facts here. That's how I saw this full moon in Pisces, generally speaking, playing out. But remember that the full moon in Pisces is an immutable sign. So that means you're able to bend and change. It is ruled by Neptune and then uh, also by an ancient ruler of Jupiter. Both these planets are retrograde, so they're not really up to their full power. They're more working in the background. And that's how I feel it goes back to this whole collecting of information uh, regarding what kind of messages were put out. Um, so the other thing that Neptune um, rules is actually the feet 
And another image I got was people dancing. Um, and it may be literally dancing for some folks, but it could also be tap dancing around things, uh, trying to avoid the truth, right? That was another image I had. But on the positive side, certainly, um, Jupiter, or Jupiter as well as Neptune ruling this Pisces can represent imaginative creations. And with the sextile to Uranus, again, we may have some kind of scientific potential come up here. Um, maybe greater and bigger images from space will come in. But the other side of Pisces is you can have escapist fantasies. It highlights things like hospitals, charities, prisons, ashrams. It is also the sign of redemption and it's a full moon. So, so for some folks, maybe even some Pisces here, they will feel a big release of some sort that's positive for them at this full moon. But as a dissolution, there's big chances here of spirituality, but confusion can also be brought in as well. Uh, but because I think this whole Neptune is dissolving things, that dissolving may actually clear a lot of things up for us, individually as well as collectively. Now on the opposite side where we have the Sun in Virgo, this is also a mutable sign. So there's lots of room here for negotiations, for changing our mind, that type of thing. But it's introspective, it's discreet and methodical and it likes to be of service to others. It really likes to get in and analyze the facts and decide what's worth keeping and what isn't worth keeping. Um, and it rules in terms of the body, the, the digestive organs, and this then lends itself to that whole health aspect of Virgo too. Now, I've talked about Mercury going retrograde. It does go retrograde that, that day at eight degrees and 55 minutes of Libra. But it will go direct on the 2nd of October at 24 uh, Virgo. And as I said, I think this is where the law goes back to collect the facts and brings them right back in October. All right. On the 17th of September, we have the sun sextiling a retrograde Neptune. Now it'll do this every year. It's just nice setup where you are given opportunities to uh, really maybe in an introspective way reflect on truth, reflect on your spirituality, maybe even get involved in some aspects of spirituality, um, charity work that could come in here, anything of service could be up for some folks too. We have Venus at 14 degrees of Virgo will be squaring Mars in Gemini. So this could just have us, um, I saw this as folks debating the facts. You know, this, uh, I saw this back and forth. I say this, you say that. Remember, Gemini is two people, right? So that's what I see coming up also on the 17th of September. But nicely, we also have Venus trying in the North Node, uh, which of course is in Taurus. And so this gives us favorable energy to potentially get on, um, to get some benefits from aiming towards, you know, our, our destiny basically, because the North Nodes represent our destiny, right? Our more our collective destiny. But certainly if you've got um, your own North Nodes, for instance, in Taurus and you're having your nodal return, this Venus trining this can give you some money. It can bring love your way, um, but it can, I always like to look at it, especially connected with the North Node, that you really get a firm understanding of the value of yourself. On the 19th of September, we have that Sun now trining Pluto uh, retrograde. And even though it's a retrograde, um, it's more introspective for sure if we've got a retrograde happening. But again, this is positive energy, and it's positive energy to transform more so our internal psychological selves. Pluto rules um, Scorpio and the eighth house. And the eighth house, um, one of the things that it represents is our inner psychological selves. So this could bring 
kind of like a bright spark to ourselves and some energy that psychologically we feel more lifted, more positive. All right, so we're going to finish off this month with a new moon in Libra. It'll be at 2 Libra 48 on the 25th of September at 2.55 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. And at this time, that Mercury retrograde is going to be in Virgo. It will widely um, conjunct the moon and the sun, even though it's in a different sign, because it's at the latter degrees of Virgo. The other thing that's happening is the Venus is opposition to Neptune, but trying Pluto still, and our Jupiter retrograde in Aries is opposite the Moon and the Sun. We've got Saturn square Uranus at 1918 degrees, respectively. Um, my feeling about this is, again, we're looking at the law. Uh, judges. Diplomacy could be in on the cards here as well in terms of the worldwide stage. But that whole Jupiter retrograde opposite the moon and the sun really said some individuals will be either overtly or covertly in their head saying, I'm above the law. And overtly, this may be a lot of boasting that goes on. But rest assured, once that Mercury retrograde goes forward in October, that long arm of the law, it's coming in. So I guess it's uh, don't step outside of the law around this new moon. Just follow the law, I would say, is your best recourse here. Now, Libra is a cardinal sign, and it likes to lead. Libra is ruled by Venus. And so where is Venus right now? Venus is at 25 degrees of Virgo. So at this new moon, Venus is saying, I have to be practical. I have to use my critical faculties to figure out what facts are important here. I may even need to take care of maybe some individuals um, of your digestive system. Maybe some corrections for some individuals have to come in here too. Now what's interesting is that whole Mercury retrograde that I've spent some time on will be going uh, direct at this Venus degree point at the new moon. So there's a tie-in with this new moon and that whole um, Mercury going direct next month in October, right? So it's on the 2nd of October that happens. So it's not long after this new moon. So what do we focus on when we have a new moon in Libra? Well, first of all, I'd like to focus on Librans and say that um, Happy New Year. This is your new year, Libra. And certainly if you've got anything around, say, the one to three degree mark of Libra, say your ascendant or sun, I would say that this whole year could bring in a lot of newness for you. Um, so we focus on balance when we talk about Libra, justice. Therefore, we're also focusing on laws. Um, official legal papers. You're seeking harmony at this new moon, but it also represents partnerships. Why is that? It's because Libra is represented by the seventh house. And Libra, as I mentioned, is ruled by Venus. So partnerships of all sorts could come up at this time. Um, I would say this could be business or marriage partnerships. But at this time, it's a new start to focus as a team, not as an individual. Um, we're also implicated with politics, diplomacy, and of course, charm, uh, when we bring Venus into the, um, the conversation here. But I would say, because this is a new moon, there could be a really nice touch of sweetness for those that have these degrees somewhere in um, their own chart at a significant point. So that would be your ascendant, uh, your sun, your moon, or a conglomeration of planets, right, to have a real effect. 
but it can also bring in potentially some money. And I mean, if we just look at the literal translation of Venus and then Libra, we could say that maybe some money that was owed to some individuals comes in here for you. But I'll just remind you that Venus represents money for sure. It represents our values, especially the value of ourself. It represents love. But when it's in Virgo, it's concerned with the facts, ma'am, just the facts, and is very practical. When we look at October, I've already mentioned that the Mercury uh, will go retrograde in Virgo, but it does start our eclipse season again. And uh, we will have a new moon eclipse in Scorpio, a full moon in Aries, and we'll have the exact square of Saturn as well as Uranus. Next, I'm going to be doing the Sun and or Ascendant uh, signs. Capricorn. So this full moon in Pisces is in your third house. And um, we'll have Neptune close by. So this sextiles, uh, the moon sextiles uh, Capricorn and therefore the sun will be trining your sign. And the sun um, will be in your ninth house. So this is all positive for you, Capricorn. And I know there's a lot of Capricorns that have been going with Pluto in your sign, have been going through a lot of transformational changes, either self-imposed or imposed from the outside. So this is kind of a nice relief, even though it's a full moon, um, I got the impression from this that there may be some reason that siblings or your neighbors or neighborhood comes into play, um, but it could also be a time when communications are very important. Now, we're going to have the Mercury retrograde happening, right? So with the Mercury retrograde happening here, um, we still need to be looking at um, going back and collecting the facts appropriately. And so it could also relate to writing, right? The third house relates. So for those Capricorns that are writers, this could just have you rewriting some things. Um, maybe you bring something to a conclusion with regards to your writing and you say, no, I don't want to do it that way. I actually want to rewrite this now. Let me go back and look at everything that I wrote. And uh, you get inspired with Neptune there also to take a different path, to do something different. But with the ninth house activated by the sun, there may be some Capricorns that have one or two things. <coughs> you could decide um, that you want to get your book published and that you've finished all your writing, right? And then that comes to light for you. Uh, you were greatly inspired by someone who maybe is inspired by you and what you've written and helps you get something published. It can also bring up the conclusion of advanced education. Um, it, ninth house also rules foreign people, foreign things, so there may be a foreign connection with regards to you tying something up at this time, especially regarding communications, or writing, or publishing. Yeah. Now the new moon in Libra is in your 10th house. Wow! Hey Capricorn, this is awesome! So you've got a chance here of having um, a whole new beginning in your career for those that are up for it or choose to do it. Now, you're still going to be having that Mercury uh, retrograde happening at this time, but it's now going to be in Virgo. And I think that's a good thing for you because, of course, Virgo trines your sign Capricorn. So I would say if you do have a new opportunity for a career or job change, just take a close look um, at the information that you're given and make sure you get whatever information you need from that yourself, right? But I see this as a positive new moon for you, Capricorn, especially if you're having a new start with regards to your career. Uh, very positive for you, no question of it. You may have to go back, though, as I said, and um, so, so take a look at whatever, whatever contracts you have uh, or you're going to sign. Make sure you really understand the facts behind everything 
and that you have a critical eye on it. That's the only thing I would say, because you've got that Mercury retrograde ongoing here, right? Um, and it'll dip back into, that Mercury retrograde will dip back into your ninth house as well. So, yeah, that ninth house is going to be aspected here with both the full moon and the new moon, Capricorn. So, I've already mentioned the areas that it covers. But it's interesting because the ninth house can also cover the law. Because Jupiter rules the ninth house. And Jupiter rules laws as well as Libra. Um, so yeah, maybe also check out, um, and it's going to be individual for everybody, but if there's anything to do with laws that you've got to follow or employers that have to follow certain laws, make sure you do your due, due diligence and, and follow them. But other than that, okay, I'm going to end with the fact, Capricorn, that this could be a whole new start in your career. And you've almost got Pluto out of your sign. <laughs> It's only in the latter degrees right now. Take care, Capricorn. Okay, so that wraps up my video for September 2022. I hope you've enjoyed it. I always like listening to your comments and uh, having some dialogue back and forth. If you would like to get your chart done, you know I would absolutely love to do that. Astrology is my favorite thing to do. I'm wishing everyone a great fall season. Please take care of yourself. I'm sending you lots of positive energy and lots of love. Bye for now.